everything. I want to thank God for everything. And as you thank God for everything, everything comes under the hand of God in your life. I want to start off today by welcoming people all over the world. Here we are in Homa, Louisiana. And uh, we've just been praying and we were worshiping in our church. I want to start off with the, the last song that our group was singing about, In Awe of God. I'm in awe of you. And I want, to hear, I want you to hear these words because the message is lining up with this song. And I want you to really listen. Put on your spiritual ears. Jesus said, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So I, I just proclaim, if anybody on the planet can accurately hear the voice of God, if, if there's only one person on the planet, it's me. But you know, it's not just one, it's whoever. Whoever wants to hear God, you can hear God. My sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, how can you tell the voice of God? Well, say my sheep, my people. Hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger you will not follow. Wow. I've been putting my faith in God's ability to speak to me. It's not my faith in me to hear him. It's my faith in him to get me to hear him. Amen. My faith is in him. So the words are talking about God. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. So I'm looking at all these words. And today I want to get into the message that God gave me for you and you and you. And as we do this, I want to shout out to our friends, Leslie Barton, her daughter Genevieve, and her other daughter Julianne. My wife Deborah and I had a beautiful luncheon yesterday <laughs> together. And uh, it's a spiritual luncheon. And we were uh, together for, you know, I like to eat slow because I'm from Paris too, you know, and in Paris, at least two hours, I like to take. at least for a lunch or a dinner. Well, we spent three and a half hours prophesying, and the, the, the restaurant said, now, you know, it's going to get loud because they have two late graduates. It's going to be very loud in here. I said, oh, it's okay. Just get me the best seat in the house. We had the best seat in the house. And uh, I got up at some point to walk away, and I realized <coughs> it wasn't loud at all. In fact, everything was kind of quiet. And everything we had been saying was booming throughout the place for about three and a half hours as we were prophesying and releasing the power of God. And all of a sudden I realized, Deborah was saying, you know, the waitress, we gave her a good tip because it's three and a half hours. And she, she left, we left, she said, well, thank you so much. But I believe it was not just for the tips. I believe she had been listening. I, and I realized, Deborah was saying, yeah, people were kind of like listening to what was saying. We were in, where were we in? Uh, Tupelo, Mississippi the other day. And uh, Deborah says, where's that prophecy that you and I received back in 2002? And I was reading from the director of the, of the prophetic program, the prophetic department of Christ for the nation. She had given us a prophetic word, Deborah and I. And we had it typed and everything. And she says, where's that word? God's speaking and wants to bring it up. You, listen, never forget the prophetic words that God has for you. So, because those words progressively release in your life. It's a progressive thing. Not just one time. It is like forever. So she was looking up, said I couldn't find it. So I pulled it up on my iPad or my, my iPhone. I found it. 
And we were sitting, we were sitting inside before. It was a breakfast place. Almost couldn't find it. We had gone all the way on the other side of town, came to this side of town, found it, decided to eat there. We're inside, and I said, you know, it's just too cold in here. Let's go eat outside. So we were sitting outside, the only ones outside, on a little sidewalk cafe type uh, seating. And so I start reading. I back off from her table, and I'm, a, I'm about four or five feet from her, and my voice is like this as I'm reading it. And all of a sudden, never said, Jules. And I look, and she said, look, this lady, and she, she was down below, because we, we were on her like a little balcony here, and she's down below looking up and listening. And she said, no, no, keep reading, keep reading. It's the Lord speaking to me. So I kept reading, and it's like five minutes long. I just was reading it loud. And she said, God brought you here. I'm not even supposed to be here, she said, but God brought me here. And God wanted me to hear this. It's like the sunshine has opened upon my life. Her name was Marianne, I think, or Marion or something. I have it written down. Her last name was Moore. And uh, she said, it's like the sunshine has opened up on my life. I needed to hear this. My life was just kind of going off in the wrong direction. But God has a hold of me now. Everything has changed. Wow. Wow, and that's how it was this past weekend. I mean, we just prophetically releasing the word. And I want to read the scriptures. We just read the song. Beautiful, beyond comprehension. Too marvelous for words. When you get in the presence of God, it's, it's beyond what you can think. And so as we were sharing with Leslie Barton and Juliana and, and Genevieve, I let them know. I said, let me tell you, we are supernatural people. We're supernatural. It's not natural. We don't think religious. We think kingdom of heaven. We think spirit. And we started speaking spirit for three and a half hours. Speaking spirit. And I want you to hear what happened to a man named John. He was a teenager when he met Jesus. He was fishing with his brother James. And, and they had different partners right there in the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus walked by and looked at him. And he said, hey, follow me. They dropped their nets and followed. Can you imagine? This same John was the only disciple that didn't die by martyrdom. It was God's will that he'd live a long time aged life. He, he was thrown in oil. They tried to kill him in boiling oil, but he didn't burn. So finally they just put him on an island. They thought exiled where his voice wouldn't be heard. But on that island, when he, everybody thought he was put away, God had a different idea. And he wrote the book of Revelation. And when he got into the book of Revelation, when he actually entered into it, we know it as the book of Revelations, it was what we just sang. It's beyond comprehension. It's too marvelous words. I'm going to try to describe what I see. I'm going to try to describe it, but I'm telling you, it's like, blow my mind. And so from John, he wrote these words. And I just am just taking two scriptures, not even bringing the descriptions. The, the descriptions are fabulous. Like before the throne of God, we're talking about the throne of God. He said, the floor was like a sea of crystal. Wow. I have some little pieces of crystal I bought my wife over the years. Be Crystal's beautiful. Can you imagine a sea of it in front of the throne? And it's, the lights, it was a light show that was happening. They had sardis and different kinds of like precious stone colors all over the place. It's like he's trying to describe it. He says it's like a rainbow, but it's like beyond the rainbow. But before, he says in chapter 4, verse 1, this is, listen to I'm, my whole message from these two verses. I'm talking spirit talk. So you need to have spirit ears put on. So he says this, after this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And that someone was Jesus. Go back later. I'm not going to take the time and read what he saw. It was like, it was fabulous. Too, too marvelous for words. Beyond comprehension. 
So today, the title of the message is Living Life in the Spirit. The Bible says that we come to God because the Spirit of God draws us. And when we come to God and the Spirit of God draws us, he said, Jesus said this, this uh, to, to this man named Nicodemus, who was a very religious man, a good man, and he comes by night because everybody's kind of attacking Jesus, talking about him. He said, I'm going to go find out myself. And he gets in a conversation and he says, you know, tell me about this. And he said, well, if anybody's going to be able to see the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born again. And he said, what do you mean born again? I mean, what? I'm going to go back to my mother? What? I mean, I don't understand. That. It's beyond what I can think. You see, most people just think with this. That's just your brain. It's a tool that God gave you. I'll talk about that in a minute. He said, I don't understand. He said, what do you mean you don't understand? You're the teacher of the law. You teaching people about God and heaven and you don't even understand the basics? He said, I don't have a comprehension. So today, I want everybody to put on spirit ears because we're not talking natural. You have to be born again to see it. I remember the night and I was sharing my testimony with Juliana and Genevieve, the night I got saved. And it was so supernatural. The heavens opened. Triangle of stars, three stars. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I know you agreed with me. Whatever you do to save somebody like me, save me. And when I put my hands down, I went from an unbeliever to instant Christian. It was like in a moment. That night, I was sleeping, I thought. And I was praising God after I gotten saved. I had never praised God before. I just got saved. And in, in my dream, I thought, my hands were lifted to heaven and I was praising God and I felt like I was going to get sick and throw up, and, but I didn't feel sick. But I put my hands down to stop it from coming up and I put it, my hand on my stomach and I put my hand on my, my mouth to hold it in. And then I started praising God again. And, and as I praised God, it started to come up again and put my hand back down. And then I, started, I just had to praise God. I started praising God again. And this time I wasn't able to stop it. It started coming up. I said, I'm going to throw up. It's going to come out of my nose. Said, That's how much stress. I felt it. You know, a gusher is coming out, but it wasn't vomit. Suddenly I'm speaking in tongues. And I realized I'd been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I, all of a sudden I opened my eyes and I wasn't dreaming. I was kneeling down in bed with my hands to heaven speaking in tongues. That's how I started my spiritual walk with God. Getting saved with the skies opening from a tornado weather, just like a movie, close, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And it's like that started me. That's how I live my life with God. It doesn't make sense because you can't make sense out of God. You say, well, this is how God does. What you, how big is your box for God? He's bigger than your box. He's bigger than your religion. He's bigger than anything man can do. And so God brought me out of the box. And he said, I don't live in a box. You come into my kingdom. I'm not coming into yours. And I began to realize who God was. Yes, yes, yes. And so I want to read this scripture. The title of the message, Living Life in the Spirit. I got four points. I'm going to get, get you to them right away. Point one. So I want to read the scripture. I'm going to read it again. After this, this is John. After this I looked, and there was before me a door. This is this. I just love this scripture. There was a door standing open in heaven. I want to tell everybody on the earth, heaven's door is open to you. It's not closed. Yeah, but what about the sinner? What about the weird God? What about the one so far away from God? Heaven's door is open to you. Turn around. Repent of that way. Come to God. Turn around. He's there for you. Amen. Amen. Point one. See the open door to heaven in front of you. It's right there. Point one. See the open door to heaven. Most people think of heaven as where you go after you die. No. Heaven's open now while you're on earth. There is a place called heaven you go after you die. But that's the kingdom of heaven, which is always open to people on the earth. You say, I never heard of such a thing. Yes, you did. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Holy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where? On earth. On earth. Where? As it is in heaven. Case closed. You heard about it. Just didn't know it was there open to you. Point one, see the open door to heaven in front of you. Heaven is the spirit kingdom of God. It's where God dwells. The highest heaven is the dwelling place of God. John entered into the highest place where God was dwelling. The Bible says that God dwells in us. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Wow, listen to me. Living life in the spirit. How do you live life in the spirit? The first thing, you have to see the open door to heaven in front of you. How can you see this? How can you see? If you accept a man or a woman, be born again. Cannot see it. You have to have, or you get to have, a spirit being experience. Where you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You ask Jesus to come in your heart. You ask Jesus to come in your life. You repent of your godless way, your sinful way, your sins. You know, Lord, I, I turn away from that. And I ask you to become the Lord and Savior of my life. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior. I, I repent. Repent means I turn away from where I was headed and I turn to you. I turn away and I turn to you. It's, 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 it's not just turning away, it's turning to, you see. I repent of my sinful way and I turn to the God way. And whatever it is that you do to save somebody like me, to cause me to be born again, whatever it is that you do, I ask you to do that in me. I, I prayed this prayer. Actually, my mind was saying, you are crazy. My mind was saying, there's no God. I say tonight, God, my mind says there's no God, but I refuse to believe my mind, and I choose to believe in you. I found out I wasn't my mind. I used to think I was my mind. No, I have a mind, but I am a spirit. You are not your mind. You are in here. It's not your physical heart, but you live, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this. You live in your body. We're going to talk about it. So the first thing, living life in the spirit, is to see that heaven's door is open. It's right in front of you. It's right here. Jesus sent his disciples out to unbelievers now. And he said, go tell them the kingdom of God is near you. Where is it? It's in you. And so here his disciples went out. And he said, we have had this experience with God and the kingdom of God is near. I release to you right now the kingdom of heaven. It's right in front of you. And so many times people take that step. And then when I took the step, Deborah, I had been an unbeliever because I had been listening to this mind for 10 years. And one night I just said, I felt the Spirit of God drawing me in. And that night I said, that's it? Hear me if there's a God? My mind is saying you don't exist. But tonight I go against my mind and I believe tonight. Oh, when you finally make a decision to believe, heaven's door is open yes, to receive Father. you. Yes, and when I said that, it had been tornado clouds. It was so thick and so dark. They were flying over my house. No tornado, but the clouds were there. And suddenly, I'm watching these clouds, and I lift my hands to heaven. Sincerely, authentic, authenticity is talking to you, God. This is me. And suddenly, the sky opened. It's like I'm watching a movie. But I'm in the movie. So I always say, you're the star of your own movie. Make the best of it. And suddenly the sky opened and three stars in the shape of a triangle and they seemed to get brighter. And I knew that heaven was open to me and speaking back to me, agreeing with what I was saying. I knew. You see, John walked in and he said, all, all these things have been happening. Here's chapter four. And he says, he says, oh, I love this. Look, I looked. Have you looked? I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Well, you know, if I would walk in front of a door, and I knew it was heaven's door, and it was open, what are you going to do? I'm going to go in. I'm not going to stay out and say, well, it must be for me. No, that's my door. Everybody say, that's my door. That's my door. And it's my door for my family and my generations. The door is open to 
our generations. That's my decree and declaration. Amen. Amen. Why not? Well, who would, who in their right mind would say that? <coughs> hey, I'm in God mind right now. I'm not in limited mind. So here, I got point one. See the open door to heaven in front of you. Point two. Hear the voice of God calling to you. So listen, I'm going to read it in. It's just a real fast scripture. I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. The voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet. Listen, a lot of people say, well, I don't know if it's God. God's voice will sound out like a trumpet. I used to be in the band. When the trumpet sounded in the band, you knew that's a trumpet call. When the trumpets would be playing, I'm telling, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, I mean, you know. You know, that's the trumpet. It's clear. It's precise. You, it, you could have the whole band playing, but when those trumpets started playing, you could hear it clear. I'm telling you, you can hear the voice of God. You say, well, you know, I've been born again, but I hadn't heard. Listen, sinners can hear the voice of God. I heard somebody say, well, you know, if you're a sinner, God don't talk to you. Uh, lie. God talks to everybody. He calls sinners out of darkness. That's right. He called me out of darkness. When I was yet an unbeliever, he called my name and said, come on up here. And so I'm telling you, you can hear the voice of God. A donkey can hear the voice of God. A rooster can hear the voice of God. God's voice sounds clear when you open your ear to hear. Can somebody say amen? amen? Four points. Point one, see the open door to heaven in front of you. Point two, hear the voice of God calling to you. I want to read his scripture again. The voice I first, I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you like a trumpet. You can hear it. Let me read the rest of this verse. After this, I looked and there was me, before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Point three, answer the call of God to come up. Come up out of your unbelief. Come up out of the natural realm. Come up into the heavenly realm. Come boldly to the throne of grace where you can receive all the grace and mercy you need in your time of need. Answer the call of God to come up. Come up. Oh, I've been down for so long. Come up. I'm in a pit. Come up. I just don't know. Come up. Come up. I want to say it. Come up. God wants you where he is. Amen. Answer the call of God. God says, come up and I will show you things to come. He's going to show you who you are. He's going to show you what's happening. He's going to show you where you need to be. He's going to show you things to come. He's going to show you your destiny. He's going to show you everything you need to know. Amen. Just come up and let him show you. So I want to say it again. God says, come up and I will show you things to come. There's a heavenly kingdom with King Jesus. You see, a heavenly kingdom with King Jesus on the throne. Come up here, the king says. The king. Now, you know, we're in America. We don't have a king. We have a president. But even if the president called you and said, come up to Washington, I want to see you, I guarantee you, it doesn't matter how many appointments you got. You go and see the president. If a king called you, up, you go and see him. I'm telling you, King Jesus wants an appointment with you. Can you imagine? I believe this. The king wants me. Yeah, the king wants you. What he wants to do? Appoint you. He wants to appoint me for what? To be an ambassador of him. Ambassador of Christ. He has a mission for you on the earth. Wow. He had a mission for this young boy that aged over the years and became the disciple that wouldn't die. He said, come up. I want to read it again. Come up here. Come up here. And I will show you what must take place after this. I want to read the scripture again. It's so simple. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Next verse. At once, I was in the spirit. Oh, 
I want to say it again, at once. Or maybe that might, it might take, what, two or three years I might get in the Spirit. No, at once I was in the Spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And that someone is described in brilliant way, two, two marvelous words, beyond comprehension. He's trying to describe it, but it was Jesus. So the first point, I'm going to get to point four. See the open door to heaven in front of you. Hear the voice of God calling to you. Answer the call of God to come up. Point four, enter the spirit realm. At once I was in the spirit. Enter the spirit realm to go before the throne of authority. You see, the king has authority. All authority, he said, in heaven and in earth has been given to me. And I give you and appoint you with this authority. I'm giving you part of my authority so that you can go forth into the earth and operate in the authority of the name, my name, the name of Jesus, and in the authority of the kingdom of God. Wow. Come to the throne, he said. It's all by faith. He says, at once I was in the spirit. I'm in the spirit before Jesus who sits on the throne. Listen to me. There's a life in the spirit here on earth. I want to, I'm going to say that again. There is a life in the spirit. It's here on earth. So man makes all kinds of doctrines. Well, you know, God's out there somewhere. So God came here. God's out there somewhere. Don't know where he is. Don't even know. He's kind of like a spirit out there, you know. And then one day God said, you get, it, you get me so wrong, I'm just going to come on earth. I'm going to be called Jesus. I'm going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. I'm going to show up. Oh, okay, God's with us now. Yeah, but, and then he appointed some disciples. Yeah, well, you know, when they died, the authority left. The spirit realm left. We're no longer having life in the spirit because the day of the apostles died. It was never just a day of the apostles. It was a day of the spirit. And that spirit is still alive. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. The spirit of God never left. That's true. He said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. I'm with you, Lord, always, all the way to the end. Is that what he said? Yes. There is a life in the spirit here on earth. It didn't go away. There's a life in the spirit here on earth. You live in an earth suit. I tell this everywhere I go. You live in a, you know, yeah, well, the, the Bible says, don't you know that your body is what? What, what, it, what is it? A temple of what? The Holy Spirit. Don't you know God's in you? You see, that's what he's telling believe. Don't you know God's in you? You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So I call this an earth suit. I like my earth suit because it comes with two built-in oxygen tanks. It's built for the earth. I got feet that can walk, hands that can move. I got eyes that see, ears that hear. I have a brain that can think. So it's like he put me in this earth suit. But I am not my earth suit. I want to say it again. I am not my earth suit. I'm me on the inside. I'm a spirit being. God dwells in me in the spirit inside this earth suit. And he put me in the earth suit so I can operate from the kingdom of heaven on the earth because if you give up your earth suit, you have to leave the planet. You see? So listen, there's a life in the spirit here on earth. You live in an earth suit. You have a mind. You're not your mind. I used to think I was. I used to think, oh, the power of the mind. I'm my mind. Oh, the mind. The mind is like out there and like there's a power in the mind that lives forever. What, what kind of weirdness is that? There's a lot of people that believe that, but I really believe it. I used to, you remember? I used to say it all the time. Oh, you know, hire the mind. Yeah, you have a mind. Don't become captive to it. That's right. You have a mind, use it as a tool. It, you need it to operate in your earth suit. If you don't let it get the best of you, you can get the best of it. Your mind can be useful to your spirit if your mind cooperates with your spirit. If it doesn't cooperate with your spirit, then it begins to short circuit everything. So, for example, I used to say, well, you know, my mind, you know, this is how my mind thinks. That's just the way I am. No. Finally, my mind would always say, after I got saved, I don't believe that. You know, you're going to wake up tomorrow, you don't have to believe that. I, find, I remember the day I said it, 
Somebody wrote to me and said, thank God you said this because I had to do it to my mom. I finally said to my mind, I'll say it nice, hush. I really said shut up, but you don't, you're not supposed to be saying shut up. I, I said that to one of, my, one of the little students, saying, you're not supposed to say shut up. Okay, just hush then. Hush. Be quiet, mom. <laughs> shut up, mom. And, and so what I said to my mind is I'm not listening to you anymore until you agree with me. Most people say, you can't do that. You or your mind. What do you mean? You're not going to agree. You have to agree with your mind. No, you don't have to agree with your mind. You can tell your mind, I'm not in agreement with you, and I'm not going to listen to you anymore till you agree with me in the spirit. That's called being renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's right. That's what it's called. There's actually scriptures, because people have these battles. There are people that do all kinds of stuff and say, well, you know, my mind made me do it. Well, just don't listen to your mind. Well, I have to. No, you don't. You don't have to listen to doubt. You don't have to listen to unbelief. And all your thoughts that come into your mind, not necessarily your thoughts. There may be some thoughts that somebody injects into your mind. A human could do it. Just say, black dog, I just put one, a thought in your mind. Black dog, you know. Oh, a white dog. Oh, wait, he's got spots. Oh, wait, there's a cow right there. He's in an ad for Chick-fil-A. So I'm throwing all kinds of thoughts. They're not your thoughts, they're just being injected. You don't have to take and say, oh, that's not my fault. You don't have to do that. You could cast down thoughts. Say, no, doubt thoughts, are do doubt thoughts don't belong to me. Unbelieving thoughts don't belong to me. Fear thoughts don't belong to me. My mind is the mind of Christ. I have anointed thoughts from heaven. My mind is listening. It's part of my earth suit. And my spirit and God's spirit is talking to my mind. I adopt the thoughts of God. His thoughts are coming down from the kingdom of heaven. And they're raining into my thoughts. And I believe his thoughts. And they're springing up and saying my words that I'm pouring out into your mind will not return void but shall accomplish everything I purpose. It. Oh, that's, that's God's thoughts. That's my thoughts. Amen. I have adopted the thoughts of God. Can you say amen? amen. So listen to me. There is a life. In the spirit. I'm talking reality. I'm talking how I live. I'm talking how we have decided to live. Amen. There's a life in the spirit on earth. You live in an earth suit. You have a mind. God has given you feelings and emotions. They can take over or you can take over them. You are a spirit living in an earth suit. Your earth suit is suited perfectly for life on the earth. You have your internal oxygen tanks, a mind that you can, that can think, hands that work, feet that walk. You are an ambassador of Christ on a mission from God. You are in this world, but you're not of it. You are of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has sent you to announce that the kingdom of God is near to all who believe. If you believe, there's an open door of heaven. I'm going to read the four points. If you just believe, see, the open door to heaven is front of, in front of you. Hear the voice of God calling to you. Answer the call of God to come up and enter the spirit realm to go before the throne of authority because God has given you authority to operate in the earth to bring forth the kingdom of healing, the kingdom of deliverance, the kingdom of redemption, the kingdom of salvation, the kingdom of heaven is now upon you. Amen. This is what he's called us to do. Yes, amen. Not just to fill up churches so people can, you know, so, and go out and be the same they've always been. No. Your spirit beings, go out. Two by two, he said, go out. Bring the kingdom of God. Cast out the devils. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Go out in the authority of my spirit. And just as I was sent, so I am sending you. Wow. I'm talking about really doing it. Yes. I'm talking about really doing it. I made a decision. You hear me? I made a decision. I'm going to really do it. And after I made that decision, everything changed. And I said to God, I will go wherever you tell me to go. I will do whatever you tell me to do. I'll be whatever you tell me to be. It doesn't matter as long as it's your will, not my will. Let it be done in my life, through my life, and let's go ahead and get it done. When you do that, you open the kingdom of heaven's door. It's open to you. 
but you open it to your own life. And suddenly, you start hearing the voice of God like a trumpet. You can hear it. And when everybody else is saying, well, actually, I had a friar come. Friar Antonio came to my class in his St. Fran Francis robes. And he brought another not, not novitiate, a, a novice one, and a nun, Carmelite nun. And I started talking to him about St. Francis, and I started talking about the kingdom of heaven. And we did a lot of talking about, he, 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 I, so what I wanted to know is what he did. He says, I go around, because he took a vow of poverty. And I said, I remember I went to God, I wanted to take a vow of poverty. In fact, I wanted to get some robes. I wasn't going to do those robes. I was going to get with Mother Teresa and whatever the, they got, had from men. I was giving away my home. I was doing that. And God said, no, wait, wait, wait. I don't want you to do that. Why not, God? That's not your road. This is your road. And you need to take this road. Listen, God has a road for you to take. But I, I was sharing with, with, with Friar uh, Antonio, and I wanted to find out, what did they teach him about St. Francis? Because as a legend, he even preached to the creatures. He went in the woods, and all the animals come. I believe it. I believe he did that. I believe they, the animals could hear him and listen. And so I preached to animals. I preached to my own dog when she went blind. I said, let me tell you the story. Of, I'm going to preach the gospel, the story of blind Bartimaeus. You're going to see it. And all of a sudden, she could see again. That's right. And so I said, what is, what is it about? He said, well, they teach you the legend's true, but that's, it's the meaning behind the legend. And he says, you know when he talked to the birds? Yeah. He said, that was the friars. He was... St. Francis was talking to the friars, and they were kind of like three little birds, and they could go anywhere now. You know, they're not subject to being in one location. They could be spread out. They could come and be spread out, and they're kind of free to go be. And I said, well, that's nice. And I started thinking, you know, that's how church ought to be. Everybody ought to come, and everybody get the light, and suddenly the Spirit of God comes on you, you start living life in the spirit, and you go and spread the light out there. You're like a bird that goes, and you don't know where a bird goes. You see him in your tree, and then where did he go? He's not in the tree today. Where did he go? I don't know. I don't know where you're going. You don't know where I'm going today. Brian, I don't know where you're going today. Steve, you, you may, God has you like a bird, and he's bringing you to wherever he needs to bring the kingdom of heaven. I release you in the name of Jesus to go forth like birds in the kingdom of heaven, like eagle wings, to go here and there and everywhere God himself would go <coughs> with the kingdom of heaven. I say your eyes can see, your ears can hear, your heart can receive, and the spirit of heaven is being released as you live your life in the Spirit. I want to close in a few moments. Deborah, do you want to come and share? Why don't you come with me? You know, we we had so much. Uh, we went up to uh, Mississippi and helped a couple of pastors, Jeff and and uh, Sherry Robbins. We went to visit them. Hey, guys, love you. Uh, and they have a great church in Tupelo. Mississippi. But before that we could meet with them, you know, we drove up and we stopped somewhere, Meridian, got up the next day and went in all the way and got to Tupelo. And then they were going to come meet us. Like right after we arrived, they were coming to meet us. And when, before they could get there, they had a man named Willie and he was there as a bell, bellman. And we were bringing our clothes up. He said, no, no, I want to help you. I said, it's okay. No, I'm going to help you. And he came up and he told us his story. Well, I started telling him my story. I started talking about the kingdom of heaven. Next thing you know, Willie, who was a bellman, is really was a principal of a school. Listen to this. He was a principal of a school. And then he said there was so much trouble parents and pressure and school boards and kids and just so many people always putting pressure. He said, I decided I don't want to be a principal anymore. 
I'm going back and teach. Oh, you're a teacher. He's a teacher of all things. I said, I'm a teacher. He said, well, I'm a teacher too. He said, I can't wait to get back to the classroom. I have 11 more years to endure. And then I can retire. I said, let me tell you something, Will. God is appointing you to go back into those classrooms and bring the power of God, the light of Jesus. You have 11 years left of paid missionary service. Wow. And then he, at the end, remember what he said? I am so glad. I'm so happy to have met you. I needed this conversation. So he goes downstairs. In the meantime, in the meantime, we start talking to somebody else. In the meantime, somebody else. The next time, somebody. But so now I get a call from Jeff. We're in the lobby. So I said, okay, we're coming down. We go down. And he says, we've already heard everything about you from Mr. Willie. He was already down there. No. Mr. Willie also likes to grill. And he said, look. And he pulls out pictures. He said, look, I got all these ribs. I got all these chicken. I've been cooking the chicken, and I've been cooking the ribs, and I've been cooking all of this. He said, we really are vegetarians. <laughs> and he said, look, I got a pot of beans, and I got some, some sliced zucchini. I said, yeah, I can tell you're a vegetarian. I said, I'm a vegetarian, too. I'm coming to eat at your house. Get the ribs ready. And uh, so anyway, we're laughing, and he's already telling Jeff, oh, Pastor Joe said, Dad, are you going to come over to the house? Thank God I met them. And then we met the other lady. I don't recall the name right now, but she's the head of housekeeping. I come out of the room. They got piles of, you know, they're pulling out the sheets and all that. And I look at her and I said, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's Shannon. I said, hi, Shannon. How are you doing? I said, let me tell you something. The Spirit of God is upon you. And I began to prophesy over her. And as tears began to well up, she said, thank God I met you today. Thank God God brought you in my life today. Then the lady at the breakfast place, thank God that God, he was a divine meeting. And then what about the, the other guy, Andrew? I, I, I meet the guy at the, at the bell stand and he's like the manager. He's from Atlanta. He was a big manager somewhere, but his wife wanted to move back to Mississippi because he's close to the relatives. And I talked to him. I said, Andrew... I said, that's the brother of Peter. He called Peter into the ministry. He said, that's right. I said, let me tell you something. And I began to speak life in his life. He said, thank God I met you today. They were, everybody was thanking God. They met us today. Because they felt the spirit of God. This is what God wants you to be. Yes, this is God would want. Well, you know, I don't know. I never preached in the pulpit. You know what? Your pulpit is like the bird. Wherever God lands you, that's your pulpit. Preach the gospel. Open the door of heaven and let the light shine through. Oh, Jesus. I, just, I, just think, I get excited. I get excited. I live this way. You do. Do I live this way? You do. You live with me, you know. And I enjoy the ride. Oh, Jesus. It was so much fun. It, I mean, we were preaching to everybody. I said, if there was a roach around, they didn't have any. I'd have been preaching. That's why St. Francis, he's walking in the woods. He said, there's a bird, there's a rabbit. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching to you. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Deborah, share something. I was just thinking about how God has set us free to be able to just love people. And when you can love people and just go where you need to go, be who you need to be, touch people's lives with the gospel, you see the freedom and the chains breaking off of them, and the timidity that you have inside of you to not let this Jesus shine out of you needs to be broken, so that you can be able to realize that God has you as an ambassador, to be able to go and love people and encourage them. And so I, I just really thank God that I'm along for the ride, because this... Uh, you as a, a partner in life for me is, is like we are meant to be for each other, um, for the kingdom of God all over the earth. And I'm just blessed that we're able to walk together. Yeah. We made decisions along the way to see this as a part of our lives. It wasn't something that we were just making our lives for us. And, and that's what a lot of people do. And we, you know, we do it as well. But to be able to see the part of where God really wants us to be ambassadors, to be able to go and minister life to people, to love them, to hold on to them. Like the little lady that was our waitress yesterday at the restaurant, 
she came up and you know we were there three and a half hours but I, when I made the reservations I said look we're gonna be meeting some people that are that we haven't seen in many many years I think it was 15 years we haven't seen, seen Leslie, Leslie and, and her little children who were here in our school one of them and they moved to Lafayette and we dedicated both of, both those of the to children the Lord. to the Lord and um, and so when I made the reservations, I said, "Look, I'm just giving you warning. We may be there three hours." And so the lady said, "Well, it's Tulane uh, University graduation. It may be really loud, and but she says, y'all just go ahead. Nobody will ever tell you to get up from the table. So no one ever did. This little girl just waited on us, helped us, and then when we were leaving, she." came so close like she was part of our party so I, I even got a picture with her if it was and, so, uh, so uh so I said well you know I said thank you so much for letting us stay here and she just leaned in where I just felt like I needed to give her a big big hug and she was just smiling like she was really delivered from all the conversation that we were having with these young people that she was able to receive and uh so I just knew that she received something so I just gave her just a giant hug and, uh, and, so and a good tip because you need to tip people when you stay that long because it would have been a, a change of table. Right, yeah. and, and so I was thankful that we were able to do that. And I think she was smiling not just because of that, but I feel like whenever we're speaking and we don't realize how, what our words are doing to other people around us, we're not doing it for that purpose because <coughs> you're directing your, your words <coughs> to someone, but no matter what you're saying, God's got you there so your voice will carry where it needs to go and fall on the hearts of people that's good. Wow. and that's, that's the good. main thing where people can have their hearts touched and their lives changed forevermore and Amen. i'm just so thankful that god has called us together as partners but called us to be able to be ministers of reconciliation and you don't know what that word is you don't know what the word is for reconciliation for that human being that person or or your pet like our dog bonnie <laughs> was blind and our compassion for Bonnie she was just part of our family she's our family you know <laughs> and we just loved her and she was suffering Jules was picking her up every maybe two or three times a day to go outside to use the bathroom she was so afraid because everything was dark with inside of her little life and when we have the compassion to be able to see people that they are really in the darkness and they can't see and they're walking through life life can really be hard mm -hmm. and some harder for other some life is harder for others than mm -hmm. some yeah and when you can be able to just go and you see the darkness that they're in they're surrounded with darkness they're surrounded with trouble and they need hope they need a lifeline god has you has that little bird going out to be able to give the lifeline that's needed, the message, message of hope. I remember the day that we went to see Miss Rita. We were called by Joanna and said, come, oh, well, you don't have to come, but please pray. And we call, uh, said, Rita's in the hospital. And so Lori, we called Lori and, and Jeff, and they <coughs> said, we need you to preach. It was Easter Sunday. We said, we're going to the hospital to see Miss Rita. I remember turning around. Turning around, we were coming from Gibson in Tahoma, turned around and went the opposite direction to go to, to Thibodeau. And there she was, laying in that bed, and I just went straight to her feet. I was massaging her feet, loving her. Her feet, Pastor went straight to her hair, her ear, lay there on the bed next to her, saying, Rita, Rita, faith has arrived. Faith has arrived, Rita. I know you can hear me. Faith has arrived. And the, and everybody had been in tears. Crying Somebody was over, over her. Friends. They had friends. One was over her body, <laughs> weeping just biblically, uncontrollably. Biblically, we just saw like, it. And we just Jesus said, in, in Jesus' name, our baby is coming back. And she told us later that... Rita! <laughs> You will live and not die and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Darkness was all around me, Rita. Darkness was all around people that you have the influence of. Or maybe you don't even have the influence over them. But you, God sent you into that atmosphere. And he wants you to release words. He wants you to, you to release love. He wants you to release hope to people who really need it. And I'm so thankful 
that God has commissioned us in this life. And we're just believing and standing in agreement that we have a to a hundred and twenty years walking in authority to be able to see people being set free. And months later we went to a, a place where Rita was recovering and she said she was in the arms of Jesus. In a rocking chair. In a rocking chair, and Jesus was holding the day, her. The day we arrived at that hospital. She was up with Jesus there. And she heard these words that Pastor spoke. Rita, you will live and not die. And you will proclaim what the Lord has done. And she heard that. She said she heard it. Jesus was rocking her. And she was sent back for a purpose. We're believing for you to be able to be totally restored, Rita. I mean, you are just, your mind is strong. You have a will to love God and worship God and hold him dear. And everybody around you knows it. And we're so thankful that we may be able to see you. But we're believing for her, for Rita to be totally restored. Manifestation of every element of her body to be able to be walking and to be speaking the way she has been designed to speak. And that's where we stand in agreement. And God wants us to be able to stand in agreement with people on this earth, many people don't have any hope, and they get caught up in church. They get caught up with people that are wanting to be able to help them along religiously. But I find the church has to be able to be respecting the fact that these, everyone has to be able to have a relationship with God and a position in God to be able to go forth and do what he's called them to do, called them to be, and called them to experience. Lord, the possibilities of what God has for you. Well, heaven's door is open. Amen. Right in front of you. Look and see. And I know that inside heaven's door is everything everybody needs. Amen. One needs this, one needs that, one needs this. And so God sends somebody like John or Jules or Deborah or you, and there's heaven's door. You're at the throne to receive grace and mercy and just Grab, he said, okay, Jules. Jules, what do you want? Oh, 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 I need this for this one, Lord. I need this for this one, God. Here's a guy named Willie. Here's a guy, it was Melissa. It wasn't Marianne. It was, because she, she wrote. Um, she, we, I, I, I wrote down what had happened to her. And she wrote, oh, she was speaking it to us. Hi, this is Melissa. I just wanted to say I was leaving the restaurant today and I heard a message from this man and I stopped. He thought, it, he thought I was probably weird, but I asked him to keep going so I could hear this message because it was something that touched my heart and I listened to the entire message and I've had a blessing today from God and I know that he put me in the path today because I needed this so much. I need this for Melissa today, Lord. This is the word for this one. This is the word for that one. This is the miracle for that one. This is the healing. And we're born in redeeming the prodigals and yanking them out of the pig pen in the name of Jesus. And we're bringing them to total restoration with God in heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And we're not taking no for an answer. Amen. Because God has sent us with authority from the throne. It's from the throne. I think that's what Joshua did because that's what he was commissioned to do. Joshua was, in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, he was commissioned when he took the mantle from, from Moses, Moses. He was commissioned to go and hand out the inheritances to all the tribes. That's what we call each person. And our inheritance of freedom, our inheritance of deliverance, our inheritance of releasing the mantles of peace, or the mantles of commissioning them people to go out that's what we are called to do we were we know that in our hearts and when we go to france and we come into the united states and no matter where we are whether it's at piccadilly which the they don't days. have piccadilly in Homa anymore but or if we're in a, a restaurant or we're walking down the street or we're going to the gas station or we're going to a, a, a a grocery store that is our our field that is our field 
where people are out in the marketplace. They're out all over the place. And you just have to be able to have a place in your heart that you can be set free and that you can be able to know the liberty that's there for you to just proclaim the good news of Christ. And it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. If you know that you've been in that, uh, back, uh, commissioned as an ambassador to be able to share the love of Jesus, it doesn't matter where you are. We found no matter where we are in the earth, you can be in a communist country, you can be where we were in Ukraine, you can be, uh, you can be in Poland where you were, you can be uh, in, in Grand Caillou, you can be in Dulac, you can be in uh, Cocodri, and people will come to you and God will shine light into your heart and say, that person needs a word, that person needs a hug. That person needs a smile that'll open the door so that you can walk through that door and let Jesus come in through with you to be able to touch their hearts. And I am so thankful that God has given us the, the ability to walk in the liberty and the freedom to be able to do that in our lives. Amen. And I'm thankful that we made a decision, you know, I was sharing with some people. We made a decision when we got married that we would live out our lives together. And we had every opportunity in life because we were babies when we were first married. You know, we didn't really know too much. But we knew that we had something between us. And it was something that was birthed at first grade. And it was birthed, it was a destiny marriage. That would God wanted something between us to hold precious so that we can be able to be walking two by two throughout the world. To be able to give the hope. Of Jesus and we had to make a decision in our lives that that's what we were going to be doing when we went beyond our own flesh I was talking to a man yesterday and he was telling me that him and his husband is going on their vacation they're going to be going on a honeymoon type um, celebration of their relationship being together and so and you know, they, there's people in this world that l think totally different than you. Yes. They're living a whole little universe somewhere out, you know, somewhere, and, and they need hope. So whenever I was speaking to him, I didn't come with any doctrine from me. I just said, well, that's wonderful. Where are you going? And it's good that you found somebody in life that you've been for 44 years with that you can be able to have a life. And I just shed the light of Jesus. I spoke the name of Jesus into his heart. You know, you don't have to come with your doctrine. You don't have to come with condemnations of words. You just have to come with love. And you have to come with acceptance that you know that that person is a person who God wants to reach. And I was able to just love on this, this, uh, this man and, and just where we were able to laugh about our lives, he says, well, what is your secret? Because I told him we were going to Paris this July, uh, this June, and we were going to be celebrating 50 years of marriage. In July. In July, July 15th. Renew and that we were going to renew our vows in Paris. And so just wonderful that the doors have been opened for us to go back. And he says, well, how did you make it 50 years? And I said, well, this is the key that I've found. There's always a line that you choose not to cross. <laughs> you know Amen. that line, because you know this person more better than anyone in life. You choose to not cross that line because you love that person so much that you won't cross the line to hurt them. And you won't cross the line to hurt your relationship because you have too much that you imported and invested into this relationship that you want to be able to continue going with them for the, with the peace and the love and the purpose that you have as a couple. So I said that I feel is for me the turning point when I knew that this person didn't have to stay with me and I chose not to ever cross that line that would give him a thought to even go that direction. And that's what we have to be able to do with, uh, as partners in life. But I just told him that, and he just looked at me, and we just laughed. And uh, but anyway, and he said he had a lot to learn, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't there, but what you told me. Yeah, and and so I'm just saying 
all what we're saying today is that let God be God in you. Let, like you were talking about when you said uh, to Father Antonio, or Friar Antonio. They, they call him Father because he's now the pastor of New Life Catholic yeah. Church. And um, so anyway, let God bring you where he needs to bring you. Send you where he needs to go. Let him work in your heart. Don't be afraid. And let God be God in your life. And I'm thankful that we've let him be like God in our marriage. Yeah. And individually, but yes. yes, as a group. And we just have really, I'm yes. just enjoying what God's doing. And we're going to receive communion now. Amen. And let's seal some of the things that God has been sharing with us. I imagine going back to that song, you two beautiful for comprehension you two wonderful for words I can't I can't fully describe you and after John appeared before the throne and someone was sitting there now he knew Jesus intimately and he said somebody's sitting there and then he realized oh that's Jesus except the last time he had seen him you know he had the resurrected body now he's seen him on the throne in a different realm and it was like going into a jewelry store. Everything's, the, the, the diamond, well, it, it was different, I think, sardis, the different uh, jewelry that's around them, and the glass or the crystal <coughs> floor. And it's like, man, this is beyond anything I could have ever imagined because I saw him on the earth. Now I'm seeing him in heaven. We can get a glimpse of heaven. And it might be beyond our comprehension, but we grab the anointing that's in heaven and we bring it to earth because on the earth, everybody has <clears throat> something that heaven has for them. God's not hiding things in heaven from you. He's keeping everything in heaven for you. And I say in the name of Jesus today, there are people that are listening around the world. Amen and people that are listening here, I say whatever it is that you need, come boldly to the throne of grace and just ask Jesus. And I have a, I have a word that I shared with somebody yesterday. I had posted this on my personal page. The last post on my personal page from three days ago. And I want to say this right before we receive communion. A shout out, you know, a shout out means, hey, hey, you know, when we were kids, you know, people were up the bayou, down the bayou, on the bayou, could even be in the bayou. Some, somebody asked me, how can you be in the bayou? I said, well, some people on houseboats. And I used to be in the bayou swimming. She was raised in a houseboat. So she lived in the bayou. But then we could live across the bayou. And I remember having some, relative, uh, some uh, friends across the bayou. And you'd shout to them across the bayou. And uh, so I'm, I'm shouting out to people across the bayou over there. Shout out to anybody and to everybody, anywhere and everywhere. Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Europe. Ocean. Asia. Oceania. Africa. America. South America, North America, Canada. The, Oce the oceans. Singapore, Pakistan, all of everywhere. Bangladesh. Negro. Haiti, Nicaragua, we're not forgetting you, Nicaragua. Shout out to anybody and everybody, anywhere and everywhere, wherever you are in life right now, who says, this is what somebody has said, I let go of God, FYI, for your information, God hasn't let go of you. Open your heart today to hear his voice. Ask Jesus to speak to you what he thinks. Ask Jesus to reveal his love to you. Ask Jesus. Ask. Lord, when we come with communion right now, we come to ask. Sometimes we don't even know what to ask for. I say over every person 
that in any manner has let go of you, whether it's through doubt, unbelief, a lifestyle that doesn't even make sense. We ask, we pray they ask, but we also ask for them. We ask Jesus. We ask Jesus to speak so people can hear your voice. We ask Jesus that heaven would open and release the manifestation of deliverance, the manifestation of salvation, the manifestation of healing and miracles and signs and wonders. Demons be cast out right now, out of our lives. We pray for the favor and shield of God to go before us. The light force of God be radiating in our lives to drive out every dark force. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the enemy flee with no one even pursuing while we focus on our God. And you do your will and your work in us and through us. We rejoice today. We choose to believe in the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. We receive today this communion. The body of Christ, the blood of Jesus, come alive in us and through us in Jesus' name. That we would be those birds that fly free. Like a bird from the hand of the Father that we are the redeemed of the Lord and we say so. We have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We release health and wealth and prosperity to all. We say in the name of Jesus, every need be met according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray those that are under the oppression of Satan that that oppression yes. be broken. That there would be destiny breakthroughs in Jesus' name. The reality of who we are in Christ. And the reality that as ambassadors of Christ, God goes before us. That the salvation of God surrounds us like city walls. That our gates are praised. We praise our God in Jesus' name. And we say beyond anything, God. We believe that whatever the enemy meant for bad and even the schemes and plots and plans that would limit us and destroy us and guide us in the wrong way and captivate our lives, we say every one of those schemes fall down in Jesus' name. That, the, that dark walls fall and the light of the God penetrate, the God of our salvation penetrate, the God of our redemption penetrate into the depths of our souls. We release the favor of God that goes before us. That every wall be broken and that heaven's open door flow out from our lives to us, in us, for us, and through us in Jesus' name. The authority of the throne of Jesus come alive in Jesus' name. Let's receive communion together. Deborah, we're gonna. Do you have any last things you want to share before we sign off today? Just that God loves you. We love God. We thank God for Him coming and loving you, you and I, and Thanks. helping us. And um, just let God just become the Lord of your life. Let God become the Lord of your marriage. Let God become the Lord of your family. He'll Amen. help you to be able to love people. Most of all, he'll help you to love each other. And he'll help you to love your children. You, the children are there to not be as something that is a uh, possession of ours as parents. But that we're able to just love them like you love anybody else. And, and they are human beings. I don't know who I'm saying this for. But love your children as Adults, let your children as people, just like you would be ministering to someone that's not your family, and uh, and you'll start to see them in a different way. They're in need. They're in need of 
your love as well as the love of Jesus. Amen. But you have to love them from a mature state so that you can really hear what God's saying mm -hmm. about them. Not through an eyes as a parent. Wow. What Just a love. word. What a word. And uh, I think that, that would be word. Word. good if we could do that. Well, you know, when you say that, what I think about, which is almost impossible for human beings, but not if you walk in the Spirit. Don't take anything personal. Yeah. Don't take it personal. So, you know, the closer we get to people, the more personal we take them. Right. But if you don't take it personal, realize, no, I'm still on my mission. Yeah. And I might be facing something in my own family or whatever. Just don't take it personal. Just continue to be who God called you yeah. to be. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Just release that open heaven that you're receiving into your, your closest service. The freedom service. and the liberty comes closest that you can service. really minister the way you need to minister to yeah. them as a human being, not yeah. as your your family or not as your um, possession. Yeah, even churches, People aren't your possession. Even, like I'm not. I'm even not churches a, need to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, so, they do. And religion <laughs> God, and denomination. So listen, we're gonna, we could go on all day. We're gonna do that for another time. Yeah, so we love you, and I, I wanna share that love of Jesus with all of you. We'll be we coming to you. France very soon. June 1st, we're getting on an airplane. Yeah, we'll be taking on. June 2nd, and, and what we're gonna do when we, we're going to uh, sort of like, where's Waldo in, in, in Europe or whatever. Up. We'll come in into the services for here uh, in our church for those who are coming to to uh, be under the love and care of Laurie and Jeff. And they'll be ministering and, uh, they'll be other ministering. too. But we're going to send in some little love messages that that will just be for you who are sitting in these pews or chairs. Yes. And, um, and so we just want to come in t together. But it's a special time for him, for Pastor and I our 50th anniversary uh, celebrating in, in Paris, our city that we really enjoy. And, uh, but we just wanna just say, we love hallelujah. you <laughs> and remember to love one another as Jesus loves you. As Jesus Christ loves you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Love you. See you later. God bless you.